Hello everybody out there and welcome to a new episode of That Crypto Show. Today a very very special episode for me because we have a new interview edition with a gentleman that is a copy trading strategy man manager here on PrimeXPT.com. Lukas Stadler. Lukas, welcome to That Crypto Show. Hello, hi, thanks for having me. Oh, we are very grateful for having you because, you know, strategy managers always seem to be a little bit of an elusive bunch. So it's very rare that uh, actually somebody says, hey, yeah, I would like to, to interview, talk about my experience of trading. Um, so uh, thank you for, for finding the time. Especially in regards to uh, that you still have a full time job uh, on the side, I should say, that you need to apply to on a daily level. That's correct. Yes, I'm a, a full time <laughs> research scientist. So mm -hmm. that's my main job. And then I spent, but my, uh, my second passion is, is trading. Yeah. Okay, a full time scientist. And I, I think this is really interesting also, because I know a lot of the viewers out there are kind of in the same position that they have a job they have to attend to, uh, you know, to, to bring the food on the table, mm -hmm. so to say, but that they also want to build in uh, to build up a second income stream from trading, be it now um, trading for themselves. I know a lot of people also are dreaming of becoming a copy trading manager, managing the money of other people. You are the living example of that actually is possible. Um, I think maybe the first question would be uh, that uh, interests the audience. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to the position you are right in here from a scientist uh, to somebody who also does trading uh, and manages the money of other people? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, so um, I guess my journey started really after the financial crisis of 2008. Um, before that, I was a student and I was happy with the interest rates on bank bank accounts. Um, and then the financial crisis hit and then interest rent rates went to zero. And I had to think of other ways of, of investing my savings. So I started off um, first quite conservatively with, you know, companies that pay dividends, uh, long term view. Um, but more recently, a couple of years ago, um, when the especially when, since the um, inflation started to go up um, it became obvious that i had to do something in addition to that in order to um, increase my revenue stream and my income and that's when i decided to also trade actively trade um, on the market so that's going back about three or four years now and i really stepped that up a lot um, in the last year because I find that from a trading point of view, when you are at the extremes of the markets, you know, if you look at um, foreign exchange pairs, that's the best place to, to trade. Mm, uh, very, very interesting. So um, you as a scientist, would you say that a, a lot of the things and um, methodology actually that you use in your daily work as a scientist, uh, that you also can apply that to trading? Absolutely. So I do some of what I do is computational biology. Um, so I may, I write algorithms to analyze big sets of data, and um, and really the um, financial markets are a very big big data set. And so by uh, applying some of these skills, coding skills and algorithms to my trading strategy, I can transfer some of those scientific skills onto my trading skills. Mm, yes. That's very interesting because over the course of the last, I would say, like six or seven years, uh, actually analyzing large sets of data, uh, machine learning, or I don't want to use the, the buzzword uh, artificial intelligence now because I still think there's a difference of mach between ma machine learning and artificial uh, intelligence. Um, I, I progressively have started using that as well. And uh, I can only highlight what you just said, large data sets, because it's mm -hmm. unbelievable for me once you start working with, with data, how much data actually there is available uh, exactly. online. So you very quickly end up with really gigabytes of data when you need the computational power to, to analyze those. The, the coding right. part has gotten progressively easier, luckily for me, because I'm a very bad coder, uh, but I luckily uh, found my way uh, working with those uh, Python modules for TensorFlow and so on mm -hmm. uh, that are available nowadays. So is that something you use also, like uh, Python, for example? I use uh, Python and R, are the two programming languages. R is my fit, um, for statistical analysis. Um, I think that's very powerful to um, 
to try when you try and predict um, of the trading patterns and, and I guess the future, which is what we're trying to do. So yeah, so I think that's been very very helpful in that regard. My scientific background. If you are now also interested, uh, dear viewer, to know more about Lucas, uh, underneath the video you will find links to the two trading uh, strategies uh, that Lucas is currently managing on the copy trading uh, module. And what I saw there, I, in my opinion, quite impressive. I think you've done this now for uh, around about 100 days. Um, That's right. On, on for, this platform, for one of yeah. the strategies, mm -hmm. which is like 146 or 150 percent uh, up in, in 100 days. I, I think that's very, very impressive. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been an interesting couple of months. Um, as I said earlier, the if you look, for example, at the foreign, foreign exchange markets, um, which is one of my favorite markets at the moment, uh, with because of inflation and because of what governments are doing with interest rates and central banks are doing with interest rates, we are really at the extreme end of some of these um, markets. And, and that is where you have good entry points to to for short to medium term trades. And that is what I've been exploiting uh, recently. So would you describe yourself more of a contrarian trader then? Well, um, I think there's an element of that, absolutely. Um, but I think it's, you know, if you look at, for example, um, a particularly interesting trade just today, very specifically, was the um, influence by the decision of the Bank of Japan um, to change their, their yield management. Um, that's led to a huge increase or growth or spike of the, the yen. And that has... Um, made for a very interesting trade because for a couple of days now I've been been trading the um, Swiss franc um, Japanese yen pair. I've been shorting mm. that and that has paid off today. Um, um, but that's su super good trade, yeah, really. Yes, yeah, it, I, <laughs> yeah. But I think that's I think it's been it's that's been on the, the Japanese yen has been so weak and of, of course Japan likes to keep it weak, but it's been so weak. I think it's been. Um, not a particularly um, controversial view to think that there would be a, there would be intervening at some point, and I think that's what I anticipated um, in the last couple. Of non months. Nonetheless, something we really haven't seen in a long, long time uh, that there's movement in, when it comes to the interest rate uh, right. yeah. in, in in Japan. Yeah, and uh, I agree. So, guys, if you haven't seen it, I have to look a little bit to my side here. Uh, so we were trading above US dollar yen uh, above 137 earlier still. This morning and uh, because of the interest rate decision we saw the, uh, uh, the yen became much much stronger so we saw a move now all the way down to currently 132.4 um, um, yen per dollar uh, so and, and for for the forex market this is a huge huge move because yeah. the classical actually the forex markets is more of a low volatile um, environment although that also has changed of course uh, if I look at the past 20 years, like 20 years ago, uh, you wouldn't have any days uh, throughout the year where you would have moves of more than 1% maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were lucky, you would have uh, had something like 0 0.3, 0.4%. Um, any other markets that you are particular in invested in as a strategy manager? Yes, so uh, the other interest I have is um, commodities. Um, so commodities also this year very interesting because of what's been going on with the, the war in Ukraine. Um, and so uh, natural gas and oil are uh, uh, particularly interesting there because of the huge spike in, in, in value of these assets, but then also strong drops. So there's a, there's a means of, of, um, of trading that too. And that's what I've been doing as well. Mm -hmm. Very rare, by the way, that we see somebody uh, trading commodities. Um, right. uh, people tend to focus on Forex, uh, maybe in particular also, of course, on cryptocurrencies. Uh, but yeah, there's a huge potential in commodities as well. As a little side anecdote, if you allow me, um, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, I, I sometimes I'm, I'm not much trading commodities, honestly speaking, because uh, I have a feeling every time I touch oil, uh, I lose money. And <laughs> just as a side anecdote, because people always keep asking me, how come you never write about oil? You yeah. know, <laughs> um, yeah. it's kind of bad luck for me. Right. But I think um, I think it's something that's been particularly interesting this year again. Um, and mm. uh, and I think a little bit more predictable once um, the year has unfolded, I think it's become a little more predictable. And so it's something that's tractable with the algorithms that I use. OK, cool. Um, so 
there's always, of course, the, the signal, the, the trading side of, of entering trade. I think equally important is also, for example, risk management. How's yeah. your approach when it comes to uh, managing risk? Uh, where do you say like, okay, I'm going to get out of a trade now because the trade is running against me, maybe? Yeah, so that's, that is a difficult skill, I think, um, because what, uh, you always have the temptation of, of waiting a little bit longer, waiting a little bit longer, and it can get dangerous. So um, I think that I've, the important thing is when you go into a trade that you have already before you open the position, you have a strategy and a plan. Um, as to what you're going to do in terms of when it goes wrong. I think that's important, not just open a position um, expecting or hoping it will go well and then trying to find a plan when it doesn't go well. So I think the the, the attitude has to be um, before you open the position, have a fixed plan as to when you're going to leave the position if it goes against you. And um, so that depends a little bit on what I'm trading, Forex different to commodities, also different to indices. Um, but uh, I follow... Um, a, a bit of a tradition of mine where I have a, a strict um, rule where I exit um, once things go go the wrong way. Mm. Absolutely. I, I mean, so much uh, truth in what you just said uh, from my experience as well. And I think this uh, also ties a little bit into the next question, like what a lot of beginner traders do wrong. I, yeah. My mantra is always like you have to uh, you have to treat trading like a business. Mm -hmm. And if you run a business, let's say you are selling shoes and um, maybe you have like this great model that you order because you think your, your clients are going to love it and they are going to, to buy it. And when you order it, you put it on display and nobody's buying it. Yeah. So what would you do as a business owner? Would you like order more of the same model at, at, at a cheaper price maybe? Probably not, no. You would at one point cut your losses. Exactly. However, when it comes to trading, what we very often see with beginner traders is that they kind of get married to their positions. You know, they, they put in a trade, the trade runs against them. Maybe they put in another position. Buy the dip, uh, to, buy the dip, buy the dip. Buy the dip, buy the dip, or, or sell the high, sell the high. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and until, you know, they are fully invested with their uh, account and the survivability of their account is also tied to, to that one trade. And uh, it's a mistake I made a lot when I was uh, beginning. It's also a, a mistake uh, that I still after 25 years sometimes tend to do that I get at least in my mind married to positions. However, I would of course never risk like my whole account on a position mm -hmm. uh, nowadays anymore. But it's very, very difficult to overcome. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, part how, of human, human psychology. How, how, how did you do that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So how, how was that for you? How, what, what helped you there to, to overcome this? Yeah, psychological burden, really. It our is, it is our primitive human brain that doesn't yes. want to be wrong. Exactly, doesn't want to be wrong and, and doesn't want to give up a losing position. Yeah. Um, so I think, um, th as I said earlier, I think um, by having, by deciding before you open the trade, what you're going to do when you're going to close the trade, and then not um, changing that plan, but sticking to that predetermined plan to look at the piece of paper where you've written this down and and just follow the strategy strictly and say, this is what I decided to do. This is what I'm going to follow through on. I think that's the way to do it. You have to basically write down a plan when you have a clear mind before you're involved in the trade and then take that as your blueprint throughout the whole duration of the trade and stick to that strategy and, uh, and, and follow through on it. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that kind of um, follows also uh, into the footsteps of what we hear a lot of trading coaches, including myself, uh, saying you have to kind of keep a trading diary uh, where yeah. you exactly take down like, okay, I entered this trade because of X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to be proven wrong with this trade. I want to cut my losses when this or that happened. Could be like, you know, a... Uh, a stop loss when a certain threshold of loss, one, two, three, five percent, whatever you want to choose there is, is reached. Could be if it's a long term trade that the economic data changes uh, that makes the trade not uh, viable uh, anymore. Could be anything. But uh, like you just said, and I super, super much agree with this, write down why you entered the trade and write down also why you want to exit the trade. Yeah. Um, I, I think. Like I've noticed like over the last years uh, in particular, um, a lot of P 
people that are very good uh, in poker, for example, playing uh, poker at maybe a professional level, uh, mm -hmm. tend to be also good traders. And I think it's because they understand calculating the risk reward. They understand that, okay, uh, if the potential outcome of my trade is not worth the risk anymore that I'm trading, then I'm going to uh, fold my Uh, my 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 hand and and put it on the table and and get yeah. out of a trade and I'm also not going to you know live in the past and and think that, oh, why did I lose money on that trade yes. uh, uh, every trade is a new chance every trade is a new risk um, very happy to hear that uh, that uh, you see it this same way okay may maybe um, as the next question. When we talk about trading, what was your craziest experience when it comes to trading? <laughs> my, I guess my craziest experience was when I, when I relatively early on when I started, it was a, um, my, my own fat finger error. Uh, you, presumably you, you, um, you know the concept. Um, so yeah. this was, a, but the one that worked out in my favor. So I, I was trading on a, on a platform where they had the, the one click trade system where you mm. could open a position by clicking sell or buy and there would be no confirmation question. And I accidentally pressed sell on, a, on, an, on an asset, I think it was Zoom shares or something. And this was during the pandemic, they were going high and I, I accidentally pressed sell and this algorithm put quite a lot of money on sell. And then it took me a few seconds to realize what happened. But in those few seconds, there was, you know, you sometimes you get these fluctuations and there was this dip. Mm. Um, I realized what I'd done, I closed the position immediately But by chance, I'd uh, made almost a thousand euros, I think, from a completely <laughs> accidental sell. So um, that was uh, my lucky day in trading um, and was a lot of money for me, of course, at the time. So th that's probably the craziest thing that happened to me. But um, it also taught me that um, you can't rely on luck, really. You have to have a strategy. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, um, um, it's funny, this, this fat finger mistake is also something that not only once happened to me, I, I remember uh, when I was working for a family office, we were uh, specializing in trading Forex options, actually. And we were all, also have this uh, one click functionality, not really one click, but Uh, you could like ask for prices online through a tool from from different banks for options and then you would with a mouse click also do that and normally i think that was in a rent uh, south african rent versus japanese yen option and normally we would trade like around 10 million uh, per option so 10 million in rent so that's about 1 million euro i think if i could remember correctly and uh, by whatever chance i entered 100 million so I, I ordered 10 times and we were on the sell side of the option. So getting the premium and this ended up really, I, I sent it and then I thought like, why, why do we get like 300,000 euros on our account for, for the premium of the option right now? And then I realized, oh my God, I just traded 10 times the amount. Wow. I already saw my career ending, you know, yes. uh, me being pure on the street for a mistake like this. But as you, I was like super lucky that the price went into my direction. So I was able to close the position uh, immediately at a, a better rate when I opened it, which ended up with around, uh, if I remember correctly, like eight or nine thousand US dollars in profit for the client. Wow. Uh, but yeah, yeah, this is kind of, you know, and I think it's in every profession like this. Once you start getting into the flow of things, you kind of become also a little bit less focused That's on right. the minor details. Yeah. Um, so And definitely mistakes uh, happen. Yeah. Yeah, mistake, mistakes happens and mistakes will continue to happen, uh, of course, uh, when, when trading. But yeah, this is always a wake up call. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, if like um, if we would have somebody here now that uh, that says, I want to become a strategy manager as well, I want to step into your shoes, what would be your advice? Yeah, so I think um Well, I think you would have to, it's important to first um, gain experience by yourself. Um, and I think that's that's important. So develop your own trading style with your own money or even with a, you know, with sometimes you can get these trial accounts where you have um, virtual money um, to, to, to really um, develop your own trading style and to try out different methods um, and see whether you can succeed trading your own money. I think that's the... The, the way to do it first that it's sometimes we can get a bit impatient we want to get things done quickly and we want to get to a certain point quickly um, but I think it takes the time to really learn the trade um, learn how to trade 
and uh, develop your own trading style. I think that's very important. Um, and then once you've established that, I think that's a good opportunity to then say, go to people and say, this is my trading style. Um, I, I can make this work in more than 50% of the time. And, um, and uh, why don't you join me on that, on that journey? Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I couldn't agree more with this, um, especially about the part of, of being impatient. Yeah. Um, I, I think new traders um, kind of very often enter uh, the, uh, trading or start trading uh, with the expectation, I'm going to do this now. And three months down the road or even in a shorter time period, I'm going to be a millionaire. Yeah, uh, right. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit right now. And it's, of course, also due to the advertisements you see out there. Uh, if you Google like trading strategies or something like this, this is a lot of the results you will get out there. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's kind of important to have realistic expectations. And what you just said about learning about education, uh, I couldn't agree more with that. It's uh, like when you learn a language, you know, you're also not going to be fluent after four exactly. weeks. You're also not going to be fluent after three months. Maybe you are kind of reaching the level of fluency after a year. And I think mm -hmm. with trading, it's the same. Uh, so, for example, for, for me, uh, if we have like interest rate decisions, if we have certain economic events nowadays, I do not need to think uh, after I see the numbers of event anymore, like, okay, this means like the dollar is going stronger or weaker. This means this, this means that. Um, so it's like kind of an automatic process uh, mm -hmm. going on. If you're a new trader, take your time. You know, think yeah. about what just happened and what the implications for the financial markets are. Do not just jump into a position because you see a chart going crazy up yeah. or crazy down. So basically exactly. what we just saw with a Japanese yen, you know, you mm -hmm. have to have your uh, game prepared. The good thing, of course, about the financial markets is that, you know, there are new chances almost every day. You just need Absolutely. to be patient to wait. Exactly. What do you think about over trading? Is that like yeah. something uh, that happens a lot also? Um, beginner traders, I mean, I think so. Um, I think that's true. Um, you are people are anxious. They um, they worry about losing money um, and they all just want to win money. And I think then you end up um, you know, checking your account every five minutes and and trying to, to change something every five minutes because it's something else looks better. Something or you close a trade too early because it's it, it's no longer that interesting to you. You've seen something better, although that trade might still have to mature a little while. So that's definitely something that um, is, is, I think, another one of those beginner mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think um, that's in a way it's helped me to have a, a another job because I get it, it helps me not to focus entirely on my trading, which is got sometimes good for me because then you're not tempted to overtrade. Mm. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit, you know, in German, we have a saying, uh, den Wald vor lauter Bäumen nicht mm. sehen, yeah. which I, I think translates into English, you cannot see the forest because there are too many trees. Right. And uh, I, I also notice beginner traders, they tend to focus on like lower time frames on charts, mm -hmm. like one minute or five minutes. And um, it's understandable in a way because a lot of tr how trading platforms nowadays are designed is uh, that they are gamified in a way. Exactly. So it's fun. It, it gives you the adrenaline rush to, to click on buy or sell and see your profit and loss in real time. And I, I think uh, the position you are in that you are forced to step away from the markets yeah. because uh, there's uh, your job as a scientist um, that you have to attend to. And of course, uh, you, you cannot attend to your mobile phone or your laptop like every, every three minutes to check on prices. Mm -hmm. um, and, and do your work in a good way and in, in, in a professional way at the same time. And that forces you in a position where you have to look at the markets from a broader and a higher perspective. That's and right. yeah. uh, I, I think this is very, very healthy because the lower time frames also tend to have a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes difficult where because of all the noise to really see like, hey, this is where the trend is going from a higher time frame. What I'm just seeing here with the crazy candles on my one minute or five minute charts, actually yeah. in the grand scheme doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. And last question, Lucas, um, because we are called that crypto show, I of mm -hmm. course have to ask you that question. What is your views? Uh, what is your view on cryptocurrencies? Well, um, yeah, so crypto, if anyone who wants to, to look at my current um, trading strategy, there's no cryptocurrency in there at the moment. Um, now, and the reason for that is that this year hasn't 
has been honestly not a very good year um, for crypto on the whole. I guess like it has been for the, the, the market in general, uh, the stock market. Um, so I think my view is uh, I did trade crypto um, up until a year ago and I decided to take a step back this year, which I think was the right decision. My thinking is, but I think that the technology underlying crypto, so the blockchain technology, is one that will be around for a long time. I think that's uh, that's the future. And so I would anticipate that maybe early first half of next year, I'm going to start to um, dip my toes back into crypto. So I think um, we need to go through this phase. I think there was a lot of hype uh, as well um, in crypto, which has caused things to go up unnaturally. Um, and I think what we're seeing now is the hype goes away a little bit. The, the core technology, which has a lot of value, remains. And I think that will make some interesting and good entry points um, in the next six months to a year. So I think I'm keeping my an open mind. But right now, I'm, I'm being careful with crypto. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, you, you heard the uh, you heard Lucas just now. I think stepping away from cryptocurrencies about a year ago was like the best decision to ever be made, uh, at least when you want to go long cryptocurrencies. Uh, so perfect timing there, uh, Lucas, uh, in that case. And uh, yeah, as Lucas think, and if you've been a watcher of that crypto show, you know, I'll agree with that, that uh, 2023 is probably going to bring new chances for cryptocurrencies. Uh, and we'll for sure then also see Lucas are, uh, again incorporating those into his trading strategies. However, what I think is the important message here is there are markets beyond cryptocurrencies. And as a trader, we need to be in the market that offers the highest chances in terms of risk reward. Uh, and that currently, or at least for the past year, uh, were not cryptocurrencies. Uh, the chances were in Forex. The chances for sure were in commodities as well, because this is where we had the volatility to both sides, actually, and not just to one side, uh, as we had in in uh, especially, yeah, well, a, any cryptocurrency. I, I think you can throw a dart at a board with cryptocurrencies and you'll always have a hit uh, with low side volatility over the past year. Yeah. Again, guys, if you now want to follow Lucas and you maybe think, hey, this guy really knows what he is doing. He's a real professional and he is, in my opinion, Beneath the video, you will find links to uh, Lucas' uh, two trading strategies that he's currently trading as a strategy manager on the copy trading module. I highly, highly recommend uh, you checking them out. Uh, I think the performance we've seen from him there is really, really awesome. And, you know, um, if you maybe do not have the time or you do not want to get into trading yourself, Here's somebody, you know, who can take this off your hands and still make sure that your money is in good hands. Lucas, it has been thank a pleasure, you. really. Uh, thank you so much for for joining us here today. Uh, I think our audience is really, really going to um, to love that, your input, your insights about trading, uh, especially also how it is to still have a full time job, but follow your passion in, in trading. Um, invaluable information really for everybody out there. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Take care. Merry Christmas, everybody. And see you very soon again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.